previously on Electro Boom. It's beautiful. Go up. Hi, I'm going to show you how to drive a subwoofer speaker like this to create the water experiment I showed you in my previous video. Let's put this together. I purchased the components and I'm going to solder them on my prototype board here. Now you need some skills to use a soldering iron. One of them I've developed over years is to sense the temperature of the iron, feeling the hot air rising from the iron by the skin above my lips. The skin here is quite sensitive to temperature and you can tell the temperature quite accurately. <laughs> This is not the best way, and you might like to try a safer way. Oh, and don't drop the iron on your pants. It's almost finished now. Just need another piece of wire. <laughs> when doing something else, always put the iron down. Okay, let's power it up and see what happens. Oh, sh What did I do? What the f did you do? I'm fine, thanks. Idiot. What? Every battery has a positive and a negative contact, never connect them backwards. Oh, and if your circuit starts smoking, unplug it quickly before anything else. I've rebuilt the circuit and will turn it on now. Nice, no smoke. Oh, sh**. I need a signal source now. Or the other way is to design your own tiny signal generator, if you are an idiot. I'm sorry, what I'm trying to say is that it's not worth the trouble. Nowadays everyone has one of these smartphones and all you need to do is to install a signal or function generator app on your phone and voila, it's a signal generator. It works. Here's the speaker vibrating at 31 Hz. It looks as if it's moving very slow, but the grains of rice show that it's actually moving pretty fast. Sometimes the components get quite hot supplying lots of power. Let's see. It's not too bad, but you might want to install a heatsink on them to avoid damage. I can even play music from it. Always turn the soldering iron off after you're done with it. Hi, here is the levitating water like I showed you in my previous video. There is a big difference this time though. The room is much darker. And another big difference is that this is actually visible to the eye. This is what I actually see and it's not a camera trick anymore. Can you believe this? I really have to sing for this one. It was a sunny summer day. One day handpicked by a god of time That day I saw it in your eyes That I am yours and, and you are mine What? How do you think this is possible? Yes, I made this happen But now instead of the camera, it's the light that's doing the trick It was a rather long process to put the circuit together Okay, finally, let's power it up. It's done, let's turn it on and see how it looks like. The LED lights can be very intense and directional, so don't look into them directly as it may hurt your eyes. And so, this is what it looks like to the naked eye. Let me see what my daughter thinks about it. You wanna come in and see what I made? Let me show you some clips of combining different frequencies.
don't pour water on your electronics. Hi. I had this epiphany yesterday. I was in a very crowded and noisy area and I was trying to listen to the speaker of my phone and I didn't have my headphones with me either. So I couldn't hear anything at all. Here you can see that this canal connects from behind the eardrum all the way to the throat here. Many of you have used these canals before. For example, when an airplane is taking off or some other reason where the air pressure changes on the outside environment, you feel the pressure in your ears because now the pressure on each side of the eardrum is different. Usually we do what we call popping the ear. Basically what we do is to blow air into our nose while we are blocking the air from going out. This puts air pressure on those canals and forces them to open. And when they are open, the pressure on both sides of the eardrum can equalize and we feel good in our ears. And this is what we call popping the ears. Now some people like me can open and close those canals and even keep them open. When they are open, I can even hear my heartbeat. Like, it's open right now in my head. I may sound a little bit different. So now the trick is to block your ears with your fingers so that the environmental noise doesn't get to your ears. Open those canals and keep them open and then... Put your cell phone in your mouth so that the sound gets to your eardrums from those other canals. It tastes a little bit like earwax but it's actually working very well. It works very well, although you will hear the harmonics a little bit differently. It can make you popular in a party. People will start talking to you. Hey, stupido! Well, that's all folks. What? It wasn't exciting enough for you? Okay, let me show you something else. Here is a magnet and an iron ball. For this experiment, we need to know how close we have to get to the ball before it moves. So I slowly get closer to the ball. Ah! And this was another way to pop your ears. I hope you are excited now. How to make an electric guitar? Well, I don't know. But from the name of it, it's just a combination of guitar and electricity. Please join me for the first time to hear how it sounds. And one, two, three, four. If the current goes through your vital organs like your heart or peanut um brain, you will very likely meet your maker. Clear. What the? It's a pity though, I thought I could share my artistic side with you. I forgot to unplug the damn thing. Ray William Johnson begged me to teach him how to make an electric toothbrush. Jesus, I don't want to see this guy make an electric toothbrush. It's actually called a frother. What the f*** is a frother? Mother frother. <laughs> It has a DC motor and two AA batteries and by pressing the button it works. Never run motors when they are loose. Okay, here we go. Just add some water and some toothpaste and you're ready to go. Ah, kind of works. It's a little bit weak though. Nothing that a strong drill battery can't take care of. This baby is 12 volts compared to the two double A's that are 3 volts total. It's gonna give it the oomph that it needs. Okay, let's power it up. I better do this one quickly. Maybe I'll do this stupid shit that you will regret for the rest of your life. PWM stands for pulse width modulation. This means instead of having the power continuously to the motor, you modulate it by turning it on and off at a fast frequency like 10 kHz or 20 kHz. By controlling the amount of time the motor is on every period, you can set its speed. The percentage of time the motor is on every period is called duty cycle. Here you go. 
Some simple sh**. I'll talk about it more in my website electroboom.com. It's a very simple and yet effective circuit. Let's turn it on. A polarized capacitor mounted backwards is always a big no-no. Hey, it works! Now you can control the speed for the best brushing action. Let's go to the washroom. Hi, Ray William Johnson begged me to teach him how to make an electric tush... tush... <laughs> Hi, I went through six months of extreme workout. It was an absolute hardcore workout, but considering my original body, I had to do something about it. It took extreme effort and discipline to go through these routines, but the six months are finally over and I'm very happy that I was able to finish it. When I look at what I was before this period to what I have become after, I feel absolutely disappointed. What the f man? What? I told you I'm an electrical engineer, not a personal trainer, you dumbass. But wait, there is more. I have a solution that will make you work out for dear life. It's called workout or f***ing die. It's a simple device. It's a belt that you tie around your belly with a tiny device that senses your motion. As long as you move, you're okay. But if you stop for any reason, it'll zap you like a mother You will move no matter what, or else you will feel the pain. The device may often false trigger. The belt is very hard to open. It's made of very durable material resistance to sharp objects and it cannot be cut. Oh. So you will run until the batteries die or you die. Just kidding, we have never had failed batteries. Please don't hurt anyone, including yourself. The external meshes of the zapper have the same low voltage, but they have a high voltage with respect to the center mesh. I can short it with my screwdriver for you to see the spark. <laughs> I'm actually kidding. It doesn't zap me because the circuit doesn't close through my body. Unless I do it with my finger. This device can also work the other way around, meaning that it can zap when it's moved. It could be useful when somebody is moving something that you don't want them to. Ah, uh, ah, uh, good, no? Always make sure there is a warning sign when you have an electric fence. And at the end, just wrap it in some nice packaging. With this revolutionary device, with the flick of a switch, you're ready to... But wait, there is more!